when I decided to stick up for myself and not take any BS, um, my life in the music industry became hell. We think, we always think the enemies are just like, obviously the thirds and like people we got issues with. Or we think that only a guy in a trackie can do man dirty or do you get what I'm trying to say? And we all see a guy in a suit or we all sit in an office that we've never sat in before and feel like these people were alleged, like they could never do man dirty. Don't think that because they'll do more dirty than my man in a trackie. Because I think offensive is not paying a 26 year old hundreds of thousands that he's due. I think offensive is telling me to consider someone your family whilst you're not considering my family. I made it from the bottom, bro. I made it from a council estate. Like, on God, Sam, yeah, his voice changed in like a, like a demon's voice. Sign the deal! Sign it now! Sign it! Sign it! I got so shook, I threw my phone on the floor. Whoa. Maybe the Illuminati does exist. Okay guys, so in today's episode, I will be discussing UK music and in particular record labels and how they manipulate and actually get around the stereotypical evil label, label, <laughs> no pun intended, how they get around that. The UK has a funny relationship with avoiding and evading criticism within, for bad things that it does, but UK record labels especially have been able to do that. So today we'll be analysing and going through what these record labels do, what other artists have spoke about and discussed. Now it's important to say this before I go any further. This is not for every artist. These are particular artists that I've picked out in a pool of artists that have discussed their troubles. And it's not every artist that suffers this. However, it seems to be an alarming trend that UK artists are faced with these problems. Now for the large part and the majority of these artists will be UK rappers, but I will include some notable music female groups and I also will include some other singers that have discussed these problems, as you can see from the montage at the beginning. Also, before we jump into the episode, guys, I just want to say this. It's really important to, in order to grow this channel for you to like, share, hit the subs notification button as well. Subscribe, please. Most of the people that watch this do not and are not subscribed to my channel. So I would really appreciate it if you were to subscribe. It boosts me up the algorithm. It allows me to stop working full time and do this and make these full time for you and improve the quality of their videos. So if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, please like, hit the notification button so we can continue further. Well, without further ado, enough of the boring stuff, let's get into it. The first artist that I decided to discuss about was K Trap and he discusses things that he's gone through as a major label signed artist and how they inflict and play Met Jedi mind tricks on your mind. Check this video. What well, we thought was the difference? Distribution is just like, how I see distribution is like, for instance, like on the streets, like distribution is like having a, your brethren that believes in you and he's like, right, cool, bro, I need this. I need to do this. All right, cool, bro, take this, hit me back. That's what it is. Man, do man's own thing. There's no pressure. It's all man. Like, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, that's how I'd rather that. That makes way more sense. There's no, no one standing behind you and telling you, no, you can't do this. You can't do that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Okay, so I think first and foremost, I'm going to get this out of the way. He's an independent artist. So what is an independent artist and what is a major label signed artist? Now, an independent deal, a distribution deal typically is where a distribution company, I'm not going to lie, a lot of record labels have got into that business as well. So they found a way to eat off the independent market. However, if you're an independent artist with a major, sorry, if you're an independent artist with a distribution deal, you will typically just get a budget, small budget, smaller budget than a record label deal for your distribution and they're in charge of the distribution they handle the majority of the distribution if not all you get a much smaller budget and pretty much everything else is left to you while with a record deal it's far more incorporative and far more intrusive they give you an advance of a loan in which you get your music budget from the budget is far superior to your distribution deal it can vary as well and also the biggest difference is the percentage that you take now typically 
for artists, if they're on a record label deal, they would take probably 10 to 20% of their royalties, if they're lucky, <laughs> if they're lucky. While with a distribution deal, it's much more the other way around, where you take about anywhere from 70 to 80 to 90% of your distribution, of, of your profits and royalties. Now with record labels as well, it can be a bit more dicey as well, where you may only make X amount after your, you recoup the budget and the loan that they give out to you. And why I call it a loan is that they call it an advance, they call it a budget, but you have to pay it back. And it often has higher interest than loans typically. And that's why a lot of people have turned to angel investors going down the independent route with the distribution deal, which has a far more favorable deal in your favor. However, record labels, they have their lives of the industry. They give you access to spaces, places, give you a marketing team, put a whole team around you. While when you're independent, it's so much more in your control and the shoulder and the burden relies on you mostly. And that also includes the finances. And for a lot of artists that are on the come up, they probably, they tend to take those record label deals as a way as almost a lifeline. K Trap talks about it's a lifeline for a lot of these artists to build themselves up after years and maybe months or however long of struggling to find their way. <clears throat> now, one thing about record labels that they do, and it fools a lot of artists, is that you would presume that they have great ideas. They're going to improve your creativity. Well, you can tell from K Trap's comments. You kind of took that away when you, when you signed to the label. Yeah, it was just a bit more... Do you get what I'm trying to say? But this is what I'm trying to say, bro, yeah, why I said last time of not, don't let the label or don't go into the situation and think, could you see people in suits and you're in certain buildings change you? Don't, don't, don't take yourself away from what you really know because it's like, man's tiptoeing in the label and doing all of these, oh, no, I don't want to seem too street or I don't want to put this out, but that's what's selling. Like, yep. man got signed off of the back of man being myself. So this where I feel like bare people are going wrong, which was myself too. Think about why people want to sign you, innit? Man's getting signed off of being myself and then man's going to go and change into somebody else. And then it's not going to go right and everyone's like, what's going on? Because man's not being myself. Man's taking away that raw approach that man has, bro. Do you get me? Like, that's what it was. They actually don't have a lot of clue of what's going on. I, in my own belief and from my own research, don't believe they even really know what a hit and a hit artist looks like. I think they guess and they punt and they see who's got traction and they go from there. Gone are the days of music and artist development. They are so far removed from that right now. They're just trying to find people with a little bit of buzz, jump on that and try to to tune them into these refined ideas of what they think an artist should look like. That's what typically happens with Ranger record label deals as well. I'll go a stretch further. A lot of people may say that this is that this is how businesses run. When you enter the big leagues, you've got to change, you've got to adapt. But one thing I will argue is if you're someone who listens to K Trap, who makes a lot of trap drill music for the UK scene, to try to adapt him and make him this main mainstream act without understanding his audience, without understanding what he brings to the table, in my opinion, is something that is very misguided and misjudged. Now, this could be one mistake, but you can tell that this is continuous where people get these major record label deals and they turn from where they are. If you take Shansia, for example, her music that she's been putting out recently, in my opinion, since she's been signed and gone to the American market, is refined and it's boring. They forget that the artist that you were is what got you here. And they remove so much of what got you there, turning you into this dull, pacified version of yourself where you're not palatable to the audience you're trying to reach and you're no longer palatable to the audience that you were were, that were your core audience, in my opinion. And that is a very worrying thing. And it, I'm putting this video out there so artists can become aware that you are the one with the best ideas when it comes to your music. On top of that, I would also tell you to trust the team that you've created around you and don't let outside influences with inorganic relationships influence you, something K-Trap has said. And just this final point, for K-Trap to be someone who had to leave the major labels in order to find success becoming independent, I think is a testament 
to how major labels in general are changing and falling, in my opinion. He's someone who, once he had left, had gone to warm, had made the song warm, sorry, and that got him to a whole nother level. For a major label, in my opinion, to not recognise his talent and try to turn him into this sort of, I don't know what they were doing with him. Though the music wasn't that bad, but to see what he's done with Warm and to see where he got to here, where he was before, you can tell they don't quite understand audiences, but how much and how removed major labels really are. They have the guise of turning you into this mainstream act. But I don't think they really know. And I think a lot of artists, if you are to take a major label deal, be aware that this person that you're dealing with may not know as much as they think or made you think that you know. And they have a way of playing these Jedi mind tricks on your mind. And he also discussed how... It's not... Man ain't really just trying to make music sometimes. It's more like positioning or... Like, if this is going to work for me. It's not just like... Like you said, we stay... Obviously, America is different. Yeah. But it seems like the attitude to getting in the booth is just like some rappers don't want to get in the booth bro yeah it's weird man the game i'm not really with it like that man like i'm not really enforcing any situations or anything like yeah i'm not enforcing any situations or that. and and hey yeah everyone moves a bit sexy but i i don't even hold feelings or nothing do you get what i'm trying to say everyone has their different reasons but it's weird so i just work off organic relationships a lot and Wiley spoke about it too. The way the music business is set up, it was never set up so that we could all be mm. the guy. And that's the problem with the music business in England. You're not all allowed to exist at once. They make it like the Highlander, right? You can, there can be yeah, only one. You're not yeah. allowed to exist all at once. They don't see it as a scene. Mm. They see it as, right, I'll get that one and I'll go and earn as much money as I can earn, whatever. In America, it's, it's still like that, but the artists are more together. Mm. They work together more. They, you know, like, I feel like the hip hop and R&B scene, not that there's people who don't like each other in it, but if you look at it, it looks more full mm. of, of people working together. How a lot of clickiness, you should work with this person, you should work with this person, these inorganic relationships form. And I think sometimes your best creation and your best art can cannot be made in those environments. I think they can struggle a little bit. And I think the UK scene, especially the UK rap scene, suffers from clickiness, working with this person for due to this reason and politics. Now, it might be something that plagues all industries, but I think, especially when you put things in a creative space, I think they should, the relationship should be allowed to be more organic. And people should come off this kinkiness and this weird, oh, I work with this person because of this, and I work with this because of that. I think the UK scene and the UK rap scene in general needs to come off that. And also add as well, I think artists be above that. Allow your relations to be organic. Uh, reach out to people that you genuinely believe in. Reach out to artists that you genuinely want to work with, not that you think will just make you a hit. I know you've all got to make hits. Hey, I'm on YouTube, I need to get numbers. I'm not a fool here, but try to do it in a way in which it's organic. That's what we recommend. And I think that's what the music industry is crying out for. You can see this with the numbers and the inflated numbers. Although it may look good on your Spotify streams, deep down, do you have that deep and real connection with a fan base? Can you sell out a tour? I think a lot of artists struggle with that at this current stage because these relationships are inorganic, they're fake. And for the most part, people can see through it. They might bang the song, but would they go out of their way to listen to it live? I'm not so sure. And this is not something that is just K Trap's issue. You know, Blanco spoke about this in his interview. Independent is obviously harder. I just feel like it's meant to be this way, man. Obviously I did have a part to play in it. And at the same time, I, kind of clashed some of, with some people time to time on like how I wanted to release and what direction I wanted to go in as well. But yeah. And I will argue this with this point, that a lot of these artists are coming from either working class backgrounds, like K-Trap said, The Hood, Blanco too, and also these other acts that I'll bring up later, like Rebecca Ferguson that you can see from the montage, the Spice Girls that also that I'll be discussing later. They come from working class backgrounds. They come from, well, not Victoria Beckham, <laughs> but they come from backgrounds where they don't have the knowledge and they are 
vulnerable. They can be taken advantage of. They can be made to feel like they need to listen to these people until they get clued up. And sometimes when they get clued up, it may not be too late, but they may be in a precarious position where they can put themselves in difficulty. Where if you if we arm them with the knowledge now, perhaps we can avoid that and avoid the self doubt that these artists feel as well. An artist full of self doubt, I don't think is the best place to create anything. And I think generally self doubt is some your best work will come from that. Like I said earlier, a lot of music nowadays is made for record labels. You can hear that in Blanco and K Trap's voice. They're doing things to appease label executives they're doing things to appease them and label executives themselves are making music for an algorithm that's why we get more music nowadays than before that's why albums are bloated and long the philosophy of the streaming era has convoluted the quality of the music we enjoy in the best attempt to exploit and salvage any sort of change from the streaming model Looking in the hip-hop world, to succeed in the streaming era, most executives and artists decided that the way to gain success through a streaming algorithm that is inherently against them is to boost the streaming numbers at all costs. While you can make the platforms increase the wages they are giving to artists, by rapidly running up streaming numbers, you can make the largest profit possible, so adopting this business model, all of a sudden nearly the entire rap world began to focus on pumping out quantity over quality. Quality. As rappers like Lil Baby and DaBaby have over 30 million monthly listeners on Spotify respectively, you would think that these guys are superstars, household names that can move in any way they want, but this is simply not the case. Lil Baby had to cancel multiple arena tour dates because of low ticket sales, and in 2022 DaBaby was selling buy one get one free tickets like he was selling a McDonald's meal. The problem with streaming is the simple fact that because of the craze for algorithmic plays, because of the rush to get that monthly listener count up, many artists and labels have lost sight of what actually matters pleasing the fans. It's this exact principle that has convoluted and confused entire communities like the hip hop world, giving false impressions of what's really going on and what people are really resonating with. Because of how confusing streaming numbers have gotten, the only real way to tell how successful an artist is is by seeing word of mouth on social media or to see how well they're doing on a tour. As you can see from that video as well, this music is now more about getting that 30 seconds of listening to and it coming up on your stream as opposed to before selling a record <laughs> you know odd stuff will always happen in the business of selling things but it has gone so far removed now if you click on for 30 seconds they're happy whether you love it like it or not they don't care now we need to get to a space where we're pushing against those kind of things and rebelling and looking for our own music and demanding demanding realness or authentic authenticity from these record labels and these artists in general however i wish it was just underhanded tactics funky business deals that was really the problem and lies about your contracts nah 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 gets deeper than that guys it gets deeper than that i wish it didn't but it does check out this from conan you might have seen it before i say it because i feel like you should know anyway we when we signed it before we signed it though i was a bit off on it and because the pressure was a bit much, it was like, sign it, sign it. And I remember speaking to my old manager, right? And th no, if I'm lying, I'm flying. He's, po he's, he's phoned me and we're in the studio and I put him on loudspeaker, old manager. And he's like, yeah, like, what are you lot thinking about the deal? We're like, yeah, we want to sign it, but we want to wait and see what happens. And like, on God, Shams, yeah, his voice changed in like a, like a demon's voice. Sign the deal. Sign it now. Sign it. Sign it. I got so shook, I threw my phone on the floor. If I'm lying, I'm flying. Wallahi. And me and Krep just staring at the phone on the floor like, what the fuck? His voice just changed into like a gremlin. And all he kept saying is, sign the deal, sign the deal, sign the deal. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like I dropped the phone and stepped back like this and we're just staring at the phone for about three minutes. Like, I'm like, did you hear that, bro? He's like, yeah, bro, like, what the fuck's that? Like, that's mad. So I picked up the phone and I phoned back my manager like, yo, bro, like, what happened to your voice, bro? He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, bro, your voice changed, bro. He's like, what are you talking about? So from then, I was a bit, yeah, yeah this is a bit funny. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this quite frankly. To me, that sounds a bit criminal. It also will leave some people going, oh, he's not really a demon. Whether Conan meant that metaphorically that he was embodying the spirit of a demon or he actually transformed into a demon, I'll leave that up to you. However, one thing I'll say is that this is common 
in the music industry. This is something that happens in America. Money Man spoke about this. Even though contracts are hard to understand. Yeah, yeah. 50 pages? Yeah. There's no way a can. And addendums and also yeah, like. Yeah, like when you got to have another interpret a contract for you and yeah. it's English, <laughs> you don't need to sign it. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. If, if somebody really with you, they're going to break that down and bust it down the way you can understand it. You mm. know what I'm saying? But they, they interpret it for you like it's another language. Yeah, no, of course. And then the lawyer can get over on you. Shout out to my lawyer. I got a lawyer who's good, man. But um, at that time, that lawyer, he was cool too. It's just shit. He doing music business. I, I look at it as music business. But and music business is bullshit. A lot of it, not all. Artists need to get their own lawyers to look over the contract. Money Man said it best. If you're getting a contract and you're reading a contract and someone has to read out the contract for you, probably not the best deal. Conan being forced into a contract. Anyone trying to force you to do anything, probably not in your favor. This is something that we need to start to guard our minds against. This shit, when they're forcing people to sign contracts, forcing people to sign contracts that they don't fully understand. If someone can't put something into layman's terms for you, you're getting bumped, period. You can see it from Conan. Unfortunately, after that, it has been discovered that they were in a deal that didn't fit didn't suit them and for nine years they couldn't really make the music that they wanted to make i keep saying this and i'll keep saying it throughout the video these music labels do not have our best interest in mind as listeners and as the artists they don't they are making music for algorithms they are making music to appease a certain demographic who will click for 30 seconds and keep it moving that ain't gonna make you the best profit at all that's like making the trying to make food that just looks good but doesn't taste good. At the end of the day, you're going to end up with food poisoning. However, guys, doesn't stop there. Remember Hardy Caprio? Now, Hardy Caprio came out and spoke out against his music label recently, and he said this. Quick summary of the events, yeah. I've signed a contract that works very much in my favour. I've got back some of my masters. I've got back some of my royalties, some of my residuals. Nice, cool, bow. I brought it to Twitter two weeks ago because over the last 10 months i've not been getting any correspondence bring it to twitter people start replying i've been like yeah do you know what in good faith i'm going to take it down because essentially i don't actually like the controversy following that i've been promised numerous dates of it getting sorted nothing has actually nothing material has happened it's just been like yeah this is moving at a good pace nothing this is moving at a good pace today has come i've told them since thursday I'm going to make this a public space because I do not want to take a 46 billion pound corporation to court. Understand what I'm trying to say. So I've brought it to a public space and now everyone's saying I'm being offensive. I've not used any adjectives that are that are slandering. I've not said anything against anyone's name. I've just said I've used people's own emails to show you what is happening. Because I don't want this to be an opinionated thing, innit? Because I think offensive is not paying a 26-year-old hundreds of thousands that he's due. I think offensive is telling me to consider someone, your family, whilst you're not considering my family. I made it from the bottom, bro. I made it from a council estate. But, like, these are the same people that will tell you, Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, mental health, health, mental health, blah, 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 blah. Over the last few years when I've been dealing with my ADHD, I've just been diagnosed. I've been dealing with remembering the um, sexual abuse. I've been dealing with X, Y, Z. I've had numerous breaches of contract. I've had other artists, royalties coming out of my account. Lewis Capaldi, Florence Machine, The Slaves, Vamps. I've had a lot of ish going. But well, everyone wants to appeal to my humanity and my consideration for them. But tell me I'm being offensive. Maybe because I have bass in my voice. I just have bass in my voice. I'm sorry, innit? That's how I speak. But please don't manipulate it that I'm offending anyone. What made me most uncomfortable is this now sh is revealing the darkest side of the music industry. Whether that they be evil spirits or embodying evil spirits, forcing people to sign contracts. Or in the case of Hardy Caprio, blocking you of your music, slowing you down, manipulating you, making you feel bad for wanting your money that you're owed. That's crazy. That is crazy to me. The fear that a lot of artists have about the narrative being manipulated 
being shunned over. You can even take this, for example, with what happened with Smoke Boys, formerly known as Section Boys, where their name was stolen. Why wasn't there someone in the record label? Why wasn't someone around them ensuring that their name was trademarked? But guys, similar to Hardy Capri, he's not the first artist that had his music blockade, slowed down and manipulated. Now, remember the Spice Girls? How could we forget? Let's not play no stupidness. I can't play you their music because I'll be copyrighted. I'm not getting demonetized for no one as much as I love you guys. Check this bit out. So when Jerry approached her fellow groupmates with a plan to not only leave their current management, but also put them on the fast track to success, they were all on board. There was just one problem. Bob and Chris had the master recordings to the songs they had been working on, one of those songs being Wannabe. In order to get them back, the girls staged a huge argument where they all left the boarding house with their belongings, telling Chris they just needed some time to cool off. Well, according to Victoria's autobiography, this was all just to ruse so Jerry could steal their master recordings. Saying, quote, I don't know how she actually managed to get it. Everything was so Bonnie and Clyde. Apparently, Jerry hid the recordings in her underwear just in case Bob and Chris caught on and gave her the chase. Now that's interesting to me. Imagine being the Spice Girls and having to steal your master records. Now that's the 90s. Your master records are hard form copy. They probably saw the talent in them at the time. However, the Spice Girls at that point then exploded into sensation, became this multi-million dollar pound, whatever you want to call it, industry. Example for girls out there that girl power was something special. But, 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 you can't leave the labels for long. Simon Fuller, who discovered the Spice Girls, more put them together, I would say. Once the Spice Girls wanted to leave him as their manager, all of a sudden they started to get negative press. So they found a way to fire their manager, Simon Fuller, and made the choice to manage themselves so they could be in full control. With the manager. What, what was the problem? Was the issue there? At the end of the day, control? I mean, obviously for legal re reasons, you cannot that. go into that. But you know, at the end of the day, I'd like to say with my hand on my heart, we are five nice girls and everyone we work with, we always play fair. And there was a genuine reason, you know, professional reason yeah. why we didn't want to, you know, continue yeah. working with him. And, you know, Times change, and, so and you're just it. managing yourself. So, and we delegate people all Some around defense, us to do, you know, to do different jobs. This is when the UK press would completely turn against the Spice Girls, criticizing every single move that they were making, even predicting that they were about to fall just as quickly as they rose. One magazine even voting them the worst group. The media shift really did have a huge impact on the group, as just a week after dumping their manager, they were booed off the stage at an award show in Barcelona. Spain. Similar to the Hardy Caprio situation, there's the fear of controlling your story. There's the fear of because of their links and their tentacles being in so many different pots, whether that be on radio, whether that be in a newspaper, they have the capacity to control a narrative about you and change public opinion completely. Now, due to social media, that's why we were able to get Harry DiCaprio's story. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get the Spice Girls story until way after their peak. It can tear down even the biggest girl group of the world at the time. However, 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 if only that's where the nonsense and the evilness ended. Ferguson told the committee she was pressured into signing contracts, was denied royalties and medical attention, had personal and professional relationships deliberately wrecked, and was forced to carry on working after collapsing through exhaustion and having a miscarriage. I harbored secrets for powerful men. She also claimed a senior mogul threatened and blackmailed her former manager and on one occasion forced his way into my home and refused to leave until she called the police. Now, Rebecca Ferguson is someone who has discussed the abuse that goes on in the music industry for years. She has said that it's somewhere not safe for children. I dare I say not safe for anyone vulnerable. As you can see, anyone that is not armed with the knowledge is getting taken advantage of, manipulated, tricked. And you may say this is just the course of business. But in the case of Rebecca Ferguson, you can see that there's real abuse that's going on here. 
there's real pain that is going on here. This is not just manipulating you to think you're not what you are and you're not the shit. This is abuse where she has spoke out in stories where they have music moguls have entered her house and refused to leave until police have come. She's alluded and hinted at abuse physical, emotional, and maybe sexual in nature. Again, I'm not trying to put words in their mouth, but it's been alluded to that she's holding secrets of powerful people and that the abuse is ripe. And this is something that we need to start to take a bit more serious and not to allow the UK industry to be glossed over for a while. The UK music scene is as bad as everyone else, as every other scene, as America, as always. It is said in Conan's bit, you can see it in the hints of which Hardy Caprio is getting to. It is rife in Rebecca St Ferguson's story. And it is, trust me, there's multiple, multiple artists. Just for the purposes of length, I didn't want to go on for too long. But I don't want us to be in a space in which we are now allowing these record labels to get away with this. Now, I want to say this now, if there's any artists that are listening to this, I'm not trying to deter you from entering music deals, not being, not allowing yourself to sign a record deal. I'm just trying to say, like Wiley said, arm yourself with the knowledge, arm yourself with the tactics in which, and in which you are going to deal with these art, these groups. Remember their best interest is not yours. It's just to make money for the record label. If you don't feel quite ready, don't be afraid to go for a distribution deal and be independent for a while. Think of the long game. Again, if you're someone who wants to super duper blow, you will need a record deal because they, unfortunately, they still have major influences in marketing and pushing you forward. However, be aware of what you're saying. Kind of like what Joe Budden screamed at Little Yachty. Then tell me what you want from hip hop. I, I don't know. I, I mean, you don't think that's a question you should answer at some point? What do I want from hip hop? Or are you leaving all of this to QC to figure out? Nah, I mean, I'm just ma I'm making music, bro. I'm just having fun. You know what I'm saying? You My gonna, fans you love it. You're going to have a problem it's with fun. just having fun in five years. What did you what want from hip hop? You're going to have a big problem so with just having yeah, fun. You don't you sound like it? you very aware but what with what's it? going on, and you wanted the hottest niggas on earth. But what do you want me to say? You want me to say, I want you to be aware of your business. I want you to know whether you're in a 360 or not. I want you to appreciate the culture that changed your life I, and took you from college dorm rooms eating fucking oodles and noodles. I want you, who's well spoken and articulates himself well. My nigga, chill. Yeah, hold on. Yo. Know what you're doing. Know what you're doing. Arm yourself with the information. And unfortunately, because of the way the music industry is, it takes advantage of the vulnerable society, whether there be people who are lowly educated at the time coming from certain impoverished backgrounds or women who have come from abusive backgrounds. Rebecca Ferguson has talked about that. I'm not making that up. And taking advantage of them put, due to their vulnerability and this feeling and need that they need these people, they're often taking advantage. Arm yourself with that knowledge. Arm yourself with those ideas. So when you are in those rooms, whether you signed a contract or not, you are aware of what you're entering and you don't put yourself in precarious positions. One thing I'll add before I go is also, please make sure you get someone on your side to sign your contract. Too often, music artists discuss and say it was someone from their record label that made them sign that. It's a lawyer from the record label that made them sign that. Just listen to that. That, that, art, that lawyer does not have your best interest. Please ensure that you get someone on your side you hire to sign. Sometimes it may be difficult financially to find someone, but there's things like ChatGPT. There's things where they can read it off to you and you can then say, can you put this into layman's term? Let's think outside the box, not allow ourselves to be manipulated by these corporations and then general corporations manipulating us. Hey guys, this has been a longer episode than I planned it to be. Thank you for listening. I really enjoyed having you lot today. I enjoyed this one as well. I hope it was as comprehensive as up some of my others and I hope you picked up something from it. If you enjoyed it, like, share and subscribe. Like I said earlier, leave a comment if there's any feedback you want to give me. I love having you guys here. Peace out. Me too, because artists are raped. You've heard that term before. Mm -hmm. I'm not, this is not like, I'm, this is not like a new thing that I'm making up. The, the contracts are made to rape the artist.